you are looking to order food, you know, restaurants have been forced to become takeout or delivery only, but you can get sick. But can you get sick from the food you order or the packaging? That is the big question. Joining us right now is a professor of exposure and assessment science at Harvard University T.H. Chan School of Public Health, Dr. Joseph G. Allen. So good morning to you, doctor. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Dan. Let's begin first. Say I order my food or my delivery driver comes to my house and puts the food right outside my door, contactless delivery in a paper bag. How high or small is the risk of me getting the virus if that virus was on the bag? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. A lot of people uh, have had a lot of anxiety about this, uh, and I understand the worry. Um, but the, the, the science tells us that the risk is actually low and manageable. So just like all the other precautions we're taking, like hand washing, maintaining a six foot distance from other people, uh, there are some really simple steps we can take to minimize that risk. Uh, and that includes, uh, you know, when you take the package, washing your hands before you, uh, before you open it. Uh, after you open it and take whatever is out that's in the package, wash your hands again and then recycle the, the package or the uh, takeout packaging. I want to be clear, though, that um, you know the, the risk of, of transmission of disease on inanimate surfaces and objects is real. It's what we call fomite transmission. And maybe you've heard that word. And it's just the scientific word for yep. something that's quite simple. Uh, if I'm sick and I transfer it into my hands and touch a doorknob and you come along next and pick up that virus, uh, that doorknob is a, a source of transference, and that doorknob is what we call a fomite at that point. So packages can be fomites, but the risk can be totally managed. Okay, so you go to the grocery store, you buy all your items, you bring it home. People are wiping down everything that they're picking up from the grocery store and then putting it into their cabinets. Is it smart? Do you have to wipe every item down that you're picking up at a grocery store? Yeah, I don't think you have to. I think we have to place this in terms of overall exposure and risk. And if you take some some of these smart precautions, uh, you can really minimize risk. Of course, there's no such thing as zero risk. So all of these steps we're taking are just right. to minimize risk. If you go to the grocery store, you wash your hands before you stay away from other uh, other customers who are shopping. When you're done, you take your, your groceries home. Again, it's constantly washing your hands, removing the packaging, putting it outside. I mean, all of this comes from really a study that was published just a couple of weeks ago that shows that this virus can survive on surfaces, like many other viruses. Uh, and, you know, one one uh, aspect of that study that got a lot of attention was that the virus can survive for up to 24 hours on cardboard. But it's important to put that in context because while it's detectable after 24 hours, it's not there in, in mass uh, at that time. It decays rapidly. So the concentration goes away over time. So if you're really concerned and you want to take an extra precaution, yeah, if you accept an Amazon package or your groceries, you can leave it set, uh, outside or just inside your door for a couple hours. And as that time lag continues, the amount of virus decreases quite rapidly. That's good information because I was going to ask you about Amazon packaging, but you just covered it briefly. We we're running out of time here. I want to ask you very quickly about masks. You know, yesterday we heard from Mayor Bill de Blasio that came out and said we should be covering our face. This has been a back and forth issue about whether or not to wear a mask. What is your opinion on the mask and wearing it to protect yourself? Yeah, this debate is over. Everyone should be wearing a mask when they go out in public. There's a fourfold benefit. It's like this. One, it protects me, it prevents me from getting you sick. So if I'm sick and coughing or sneezing, it captures, it acts as a physical barrier to droplets. Second, it acts as another barrier of protection if I come across someone who's sick uh, and, and it makes that virus harder to get into my nose or mouth. Third, it's a reminder not to touch your nose or mouth. This is a major way mm -hmm. that we get the virus into our bodies. And last, it serves as an important social cue. When everybody starts wearing this, it becomes normalized. What, what's, what once seems awkward at first uh, becomes very normal, and it sends an important message. And importantly, it should be a badge of honor. It's telling people that I care about not getting you sick if you see me out there wearing a mask. Understood. Dr. Allen, I really do appreciate your time this morning for, and your expertise on all of these issues. A lot of people having questions about all of this, so I appreciate your time this morning. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.